ओम भूरभुव स्वहत सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देव से धीमहि धियो यो नम प्रचोदया शांति 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 नमस्ते माय डियर फ्रेंड्स नाउ I am going to give you video number 12 on talks with Maharishi Ramana. I start with talk number 196. A visitor asked about the three methods. Ramana Gita chapter 2 Maharshi pointed out that breath retention is an aid to control of mind that is expression or inhalation of thoughts one person may practice breath control inhalation exhalation and retention or retention only still another type of practicing meditator on controlling the mind controls the breath and its retention automatically results watching the inhalation and exhalation is also breath control these methods are only apparently threefold they are in fact really one because they lead to the same goal they are however differently adopted according to the stage of the aspirant and his antecedent predisposition or tendencies really there are only two methods inquiry and devotion one leads to the other devotee seeking the eye there is nothing to be seen maharshi because you are accustomed to identify yourself with the body and sight with the eyes therefore you say you do not see anything what is there to be seen who is to see how to see there is only one consciousness which manifesting as i thought identifies itself with the body project projects itself through the eyes and sees the objects around the individual is limited in the waking state and expects to see something different the evidence of his senses will be the seal of authority but he will not admit that the seer the seen and the sight are all manifestations of the same consciousness namely i i contemplation contemplation helps one to overcome the illusion that the self must be visual in truth there is nothing visual how do you feel the i now do you hold a mirror before you to know your own being the awareness is the i realize it and that is the truth devoti on enquiry into the origin of thoughts there is a perception of i but it does not satisfy me mercy quite right the perception of i is associated with a form maybe the body there should be nothing associated with the pure self the self is the unassociated pure reality in whose light the body the ego etc shine on stilling all thoughts the pure consciousness remains over just on waking from the sleep and before becoming aware of the world there is that pure i i hold to it without sleeping or without allowing thoughts to possess you if that is held for me it does not matter even though the world is seen the seer remains unaffected by the phenomena 
टॉक नंबर 197 गुल एंड शिरीन बैराम जी टू पारसी लेडीज ऑफ अहमदाबाद अराइव दिस डे दे स्पोक एट नाइट टू महर्षि भगवान वी हैव बीन स्पिरिचुअली इनक्लाइन फ्रॉम आवर चाइल्डहुड We have read several books on philosophy and are attracted by Vedanta. So we read the Upanishads, Yoga, Vasistha, Bhagavad Gita, etc. We try to meditate, but there is no progress in our meditation. We do not understand how to realize. Can you kindly help us towards realization? Mercy how do you meditate devotee i begin to ask myself who am i eliminate body as not i the breath as not i the mind as not i and i am not able to proceed for the mercy well that is so far as the intellect goes your process is only intellectual indeed all the scriptures mention the process only to guide the seeker to know the truth the truth cannot be directly pointed out hence this intellectual process you see the one who eliminates all the not i cannot eliminate the i to say i am not this or i am not that there must be the i this i is only the ego or the i thought after the rising up of this i thought all other thoughts arise the i thought is therefore the root thought if the root is pulled out all others are at the same time uprooted therefore seek the root i question yourself who am i find out its source then all these will vanish and the pure self will remain ever devotee how to do it maharshi the i is always there in deep sleep in dream and in wakefulness the one in sleep is the same as that who now speaks there is always the feeling of i otherwise do you deny your existence you do not you say i am find out who is devot even so i do not understand i you say is the wrong i now how to eliminate this wrong i maharishi you need not eliminate the wrong i how can i eliminate itself all that you need do is to find out its origin and abide there your efforts can extend only thus far then the beyond will take care of itself you are helpless there no effort can reach it what a wonderful explanation devotee if i am always here and now why i do not feel so devotee is asking this again i repeat this question devotee is putting a question to maharshi if i am always here and now why do i not feel so mercy that is it who says it is not felt 
does the real i say it or the false i examine it you will find it is the wrong i the wrong i is the obstruction it has to be removed in order that the true i may not be hidden the feeling that i have not realized is the obstruction to realization in fact it is already realized there is nothing more to be realized otherwise the realization will be new it has not existed so far it must take place hereafter what is born will also die if realization be not eternal it is not worth having therefore what we seek is not that which must happen afresh it is only that which is eternal but not now known due to obstructions it is that we seek all that we need do is to remove the obstruction that which is eternal is not known to be so because of ignorance ignorance is the obstruction get over this ignorance and all will be well the ignorance is identical with the i thought find its source and it will vanish the i thought is like a spirit which although not palpable rises up simultaneously with the body flourishes and disappears with it the body consciousness is the wrong i give up this body consciousness it is done by seeking the source i the body does not say i am it is you who say i am the body find out who this i is seeking its source it will vanish devotee then will there be bliss mercy bliss is coeval with being consciousness all the arguments relating to the eternal being of that bliss apply to bliss also your nature is bliss ignorance is now hiding that bliss remove the ignorance for bliss to be freed devotees should we not find out the ultimate reality of the world individual and god mercy these are all conceptions of the i here this i means ego they rise only after the advent of the i thought did you think of them in your deep sleep you existed in deep sleep and the same you are now speaking if they be real should they not be in your sleep also they are only dependent upon the i thought again does the world tell you i am the world does the body say i am the body you say this is the world this is the body and so on so these are only your conceptions find out who you are and there will be an end of all your doubts devotee what becomes of the body after realization does it exist or not we see realized beings acting like others mercy this question need not arise now let it be asked after realization if need be as for the realized beings let them take care of themselves why do you worry about them in fact after realization the body and all else will not appear different from the self devotee 
being always being consciousness bliss why does god place us in difficulties why did he create us mercy does god come and tell you that he has placed you in difficulties it is you who say so it is again the wrong i if that disappears there will be no one to say that god created this or that that which is that which is does not even say i am for does any doubt rise that i am not only in such a case should one be reminding oneself i am a man one does not on the other hand if a doubt arises whether he is a cow or a buffalo he has to remind himself that he is not a cow etc but i am a man this would never happen similarly with one's own existence and realization 10th june 1936 Talk number 198 Some ladies asked if there is rebirth of man as a lower animal Mercy yes it is possible as illustrated by Jad Bharta The scriptural anecdote of a royal says having been reborn as a deer Devotee is the individual capable of spiritual progress in the animal body Mercy not unlikely though it is exceedingly rare do you what is guru's grace how does it work mercy guru is the self do you how does it lead to realization mercy is varo guru tumati is varo guru ratmati God is the same as guru and self a person begins with the dissatisfaction not content with the world he seeks a satisfaction of desires by prayers to god his mind is purified he longs to know god more than to satisfy his carnal desires then god's grace begins to manifest god takes the form of a guru and appear to the devotee teaches in the truth purify the mind by his teachings and contact the mind gains strength is able to turn inward with meditation it is purified yet further and eventually remains till without the least ripple that stillness is the self the guru is both exterior and interior from the exterior he gives a push to the mind to turn inward from the interior he pulls the mind towards the self and helps the mind to achieve quietness that is grace hence there is no difference between god guru and self talk number 199 the ladies later asked several questions relating to their present inability to realize the already realized eternal self the sign of realization would be bliss which was absent mercy said there is only one consciousness but we speak of several kinds of consciousness as body consciousness self consciousness there are only relative states of the same absolute consciousness without consciousness time and space do not exist they appear in consciousness it is like a screen on which these are cast as pictures and move as in a cinema show the absolute 
consciousness is our real nature. Devotee, from where do these objects arise? Mercy, just from where you arise. Know the subject first and then question about the object. Devotee, it is only one aspect of the question. Mercy, the subject comprehends the object also. That one aspect is an all comprehensive aspect. See yourself first and then see the object. What is not in you cannot appear outside. Devotee, I am not satisfied. Mercy, satisfaction can be only when you reach the source, otherwise restlessness exists. Devotee, is the Supreme Being with or without attributes? Mercy, no first if you are with or without attributes. Devotee, what is Samadhi? Mercy, one's own true nature. Devotee, why then is effort necessary to attain it? Mercy, whose is the effort? Devotee, Mercy knows that I am ignorant. Do you, Mercy says, do you know that you are ignorant? Knowledge of ignorance is not an ignorance. All scriptures are only for the purpose of investigating if there are two consciousnesses. Everyone's experience proves the existence of only one consciousness. Can that one divide itself into two? Is any division felt in the self? Awaking from sleep, one finds oneself the same in the wakeful as well as in the sleep states. That is the experience of each one. The difference lies in seeking in the outlook. Because you imagine that you are the seer separate from the experience, this difference arises. Experience shows that your being is the same all through. Devotee, from where did ignorance come? Mercy, there is no such thing as ignorance. It never arises. Everyone is knowledge itself. Only knowledge does not shine easily. The dispelling of ignorance is wisdom which always exists. For example, the necklace remaining round the neck, though supposed to have been lost. Or each of the ten fools failing to count himself and counting only the others, to whom is knowledge or ignorance? Duty. Can we not proceed from external to internal? Mercy, is there any difference like that? Do you feel the difference external and internal in your sleep? This difference is only with reference to the body and arises with body consciousness, i.e. thought. The so-called waking state is itself an illusion. Turn your vision inward and then the whole world will be full of a supreme spirit. The world is said to be illusion. Illusion is really truth. Even the material sciences trace the origin of the universe to some one primordial matter, subtle, exceedingly subtle. God is the same both to those who say the world is real and to their opponents. Their outlook is different. You need not entangle yourself in such disputations. The goal is one and the same for all. Look to it. 14th June 1936, talk number 200. Mr. Cohen desired an explanation of the term blazing light used by Paul Brunton in the last chapter of A Search in Secret India. Mercy. 
since the experience is through the mind only it appears first as a blaze of light the mental predispositions are not yet destroyed the mind is however functioning in its infinite capacity in this experience as for nirvikalpa samadhi that is samadhi of non differentiation undifferentiated supreme beautiful beautific repose it consists of pure consciousness which is capable of illumining knowledge or ignorance it is also beyond light or darkness that it is not darkness is certain can it be however said to be not light at present objects are perceived only in light is it wrong to say that realization of one's self requires the light here light would mean the consciousness which reveals as the self only the yogis are said to see photisms of colors and lights preliminary to self realization by the practice of yoga once before goddess parvati practiced austerities for realizing the supreme she saw some kinds of light she rejected them because they emanated from the self leaving the self as it was ever before she determined that they were not supreme she continued her austerities and experienced a limitless light she determined that this also was only a phenomenon and not the supreme reality still she continued her austerities until she gained transcendental peace she realized that it was the supreme that the self was the soul reality the tatirya upanishad say seek brahma through penance later on penance is brahma another upanishad says itself is penance which is again made up of wisdom alone there the sun shines not nor the moon nor the stars nor fire all the shine forth by its light talk 201 the parsi ladies asked for an illustration to explain why the self though ever present and most intimate is not being realized maharshi cited the stories of one swakantha bharanam katha the story of the necklace on the neck itself not being detected second Dasma of the ten fools who counted only nine, each of them omitting to count himself. Third, the lion's cub brought up in a herd of goats. Fourth, Karna not knowing his real <coughs> parentage. <coughs> Fifth, the king's son brought up in a low class family. They further asked for Maharishi's opinion. of sri arvindo's yoga and his claim to have proved beyond the experience of the vedic rishis and the mother's opinion of the fitness of her disciples to begin with the realization of the upanishadic rishis mercy arvindo advises complete surrender let us do that first and await results and discuss further if need be afterwards and not now there is no use discussing transcendental experiences by those whose limitations are not divested learn what surrender is it is it is to merge in the source of the ego the ego is surrendered to the self 
everything is dear to us because of love of the self the self is that to which we surrender our ego and let the supreme power that is the self do what it pleases the ego is already the self we have no rights over the ego even as it is however supposing we had we must surrender them in devotee what about bringing down divine consciousness from above mercy as if the same is not already in the heart o arjuna i am in the expanse of the heart says shri krishna he who is in the sun is also in this man says a mantra in the upanishads the kingdom of god is within says the bible all are thus agreed that god is within what is to be brought down from where who is to bring what and why realization is only the removal of obstacles to the recognition of the eternal immanent reality reality is it need not be taken from place to place devotee what about arvindo's claim to start from self realization and dwell for the mercy let us first realize and then see then mercy began to speak of similar theories the visistha advaitins say that the self is first realized and the realized individual soul is surrendered to the universal soul only then is it complete the part is given up to the whole that is liberation and sayuja union simple simple realizes self realization stops at the isolating the pure self says visistha advaita the siddhas say that the one who leaves his body behind as a corpse cannot attain mukti they are reborn only those whose bodies dissolve in space in light or away from sight attain liberation the advaitins of sankara's school stop short at self realization and this is not the and the siddhas there are also others who extol their own pet theories as the best for example late venka swami rao of kumbakonam brahmananda yogi of kudappa etc the fact is there is a reality it is not affected by any discussions let us abide as a reality and not engage in futile discussions as to its nature etc fifteen to june 1936 talk number 202 a said looking punjabi gentleman announced himself to maharishi as having been directed to him by sri sankara charya of kama koti peetham from jaleswar near puri jagannath he is a world tourist he has practiced hatha yoga and some contemplation along the lines of i am brahma in a few moments a blank prevails his brain gets heated up and he gets afraid of death he wants guidance from maharishi mercy who sees the blank 
devotee i know that i see it mercy the consciousness overlooking the blank is the self devotee that does not satisfy me i cannot realize it mercy the fear of death is only after the i thought arises whose death do you fear for whom is the fear there is the identification of the self with the body so long as there is this there will be fear devotee but i am not aware of my body mercy who says that he is not aware devotee i do not understand he was then asked to say what exactly was his method of meditation he said aham brahmasmi i am brahma mercy i am brahma is only a thought who says it brahma itself does not say so what need is there for it to say it nor can the real i say so for i always abides as a brahma to be saying it is only a thought whose thought is it all thoughts are from the unreal i that is the i thought remain without thinking so long as there is i thought there will be fear devotee as i go on thinking of it there is forgetfulness the brain becomes heated and i am afraid mercy yes the mind is concentrated in the brain and hence you get a hot sensation there it is because of the i thought so long as there is thought there will be forgetfulness there is the thought i am brahma forgetfulness supervenes then the i thought arises and simultaneously the fear of death also forgetfulness and thought are for i thought only hold it it will disappear as a phantom what remains over is the real i that is the self i am brahma is an aid to concentration it keeps off other thoughts that one thought alone persists see whose is that thought it will be found to be from i where from is the i thought probe into it the i thought will vanish the supreme self will shine forth of itself no further effort is needed when the one real i remains alone it will not be seen i am brahma does a man go on repeating i am a man unless he is challenged why should he declare himself a man does anyone mistake oneself from a brute that he should say no i am not a brute i am a man similarly brahma or i being alone there is no one there to challenge it and so there is no need to be repeating i am brahma 17th june 1936 Talk number two hundred three. Mr. Verma, financial secretary of the Post and Telegraph Department, Delhi. He has read Paul Brunton's Search in Secret India and the Secret Path. He lost his wife, with whom he had led a happy life for eleven or twelve years. In his grief, he seeks solace. He does not find solace in reading books. wants to tear them up he does not intend to ask questions he simply wants to sit here and derive what solace he can in the presence of maharishi maharishi as if in a train of thoughts spoke now and then to the following effect it is said the wife is one of one half of the body so her death is very painful this pain is however due to one's outlook being physical it disappears if the outlook is that of the self 
द ब्रह्म धारण का उपनिषद से इज द वाइफ इज डियर बिकॉज ऑफ द लव ऑफ द सेल्फ इज द वाइफ एंड अदर आर आइडेंटिफाइड विद द सेल्फ हाउ देन विल पेन राइज नेवर द लेस सच डिसास्टर्स सेक द माइंड ऑफ ए फिलोसोफर जो वी आर हैप्पी इन डीप स्लीप वी रिमेन देन एज द प्योर सेल्फ द सेम वी आर जस्ट नाउ टू In such sleep, there was neither the wife nor others nor even I. Now they become apparent and give rise to pleasure or pain. Why should not the self, which was blissful in deep sleep, continue its blissful nature even now? The sole obstruction to such continuity is the wrong identification of the self with the body. द भागवत गीता से द अनरियल हैथ नो बींग द रियल नेवर सीज टू बी द ट्रूथ अबाउट बोथ हैथ बीन परसिवड बाई द सीयर्स ऑफ द असेंस ऑफ थिंग्स द रियल इज एवर रियल द अनरियल इज एवर अनरियल अगेन ही इज नॉट बॉर्न नोर डॉथ ही डाई नोर हैविंग बीन seized him an anymore to be unborn perpetual eternal ancient he is not slain when the body is slaughtered accordingly there is neither birth nor death walking is birth and sleep waking is birth and sleep is death was the wife with you when you went out to the office or in your deep sleep she was away from you you were satisfied because of your thought that she was somewhere whereas now you think that she is not the difference lies in the different thoughts that is the cause of pain the pain is because of the thought of the wife's known being all this is the mischief of the mind the fellow that is the mind creates pain for himself even when there is pleasure but pleasure and pain are mental creations again why mourn the dead they are free from bondage mourning is the chain forged by the mind to bind itself to the dead what if any one is dead what if anyone is ruined be dead yourself be ruined yourself in that sense there is no pain after one's death what is meant by this sort of death annihilation of the ego though the body is alive if the ego persist the man is afraid of death the man mourns another's death he need not do so if he predeceases them by waking up from the ego dream which amounts to killing the ego sense the experience of deep sleep clearly teaches that happiness consists in being without the body the wise also confirm it speaking of liberation after the body is given up thus the sage is awaiting the casting off of the body just as a laborer carrying a load on his head for the sake of wages bears the burden with no pleasure carries it to the destination and finally unburdens himself with relief and joy so also the sage bears this body awaiting the right and destined time to discard it if now you are relieved of one half of the burden that is the wife should you not be thankful and be happy for it nevertheless you cannot be so because of your physical outlook even men who ought to know better and who have known the teaching about the liberation after death etc glorify liberation along with the body and call it some mysterious power of keeping the body eternally alive there will be no pain if the physical outlook is given up 
एंड इफ द पर्सन एग्जिस्ट एज द सेल्फ मॉर्निंग इज नॉट द इंडेक्स ऑफ ट्रू लव इट बिट्रेज लव ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इट सेफ ओनली दैट इज नॉट लव ट्रू लव इज शोन बाई द सर्टनटी दैट द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ लव इज इन द सेल्फ एंड दैट इट कैन नेवर बिकम नॉन एग्जिस्टेंट Maharshi cited the story of Ahilya and Indra from Yoga Vasishta in this connection. Still, it is true, pain on such occasions can only be assuaged, assuaged by association with the wise. So here I end this video. Thank you for watching with patience please like comment and share the video and subscribe my channel and the next video number 12 will start with the talk number 204 thanks my dear friend namaste namaste